This video is going to show you what a brain angiogram involves and it shows real footage from an actual angiogram. The patient that you're going to be following today is called Gwen and this is quite a special video because Gwen is one of Brain Book Charity's trustees and she's also a neurosurgery trainee. So she's going to take you through her angiogram. Dr. Rennie is the interventional neuroradiologist carrying out the procedure. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hi there, my name's Gwen and today I'll be taking you through what it's like to have an angiogram. So just a bit of background about me, I have an AVM and that ruptured in 2014 and today is my angiogram to see how it's doing. So Gwen is having a brain angiogram performed at our hospital in the radiology department by Dr. Rennie, who's a consultant neurointerventionist. During the angiogram, Gwen will be awake, and sometimes patients may require a medicine called a sedative to help them relax. Gwen's going to be lying on an x-ray table and a small cut will be made over one of the arteries in the groin. Local anaesthetic is used to numb the area where the cut is made. So for me the local is always the worst part because there's quite a few bits of stinging but it's stinging worth it. Right I guess it is really. Stinging, yeah. Well it means I can't really feel the next bit so it's worth it. A really thin, flexible tube, which is called a catheter, is inserted into the artery. The catheter is carefully guided to the area that's being examined. In this case, it's going to be the arteriovenous malformation in Gwen's brain. Once the catheter is in the correct place, Dr. Rennie will be injecting a dye, which is technically called a contrast medium, and that's injected into the catheter. A series of x-rays are taken as the dye flows through the blood vessels that are supplying the AVM. Yep, got the 
fireworks. That time it was a spreading network of flashing white lights and it kind of looked like a growth of trees or a growth of blood vessels. Right, it's very yeah. odd. Like a sprouting. Look. Yes, like a sprouting. A small breath in for me. I'll breathe all the way out. And just hold your breath there, keep nice and still. Keep still. Well done. Now breathe away. And come back to stretch your kiss. Same again, same light show or different light show? IR plate is in front of my face. Breathe away, well done. Oh wow, that one was like a lightning storm. Really? Yeah. More prominent on the right for some reason. Probably because you're in my right side. Yeah. It was yeah. like, yeah, lightning storm. So that was half of my tongue, half of my face mm -hmm. on the right side, more so around my ear. Any popping sensation in the ear? No, but it felt really tight, like I needed to pop my ears. Yeah, okay. Well, so when he injected the dye that time, I had a metallic taste only in the right side of my mouth. It's always weird because it stops exactly at the midline. So the contrast always makes you feel like you're wetting yourself. The angiogram can last anywhere between 30 minutes and a couple of hours, but as is the case here, it didn't take that long. I think it was about 25 minutes all in all. So your angio's just finished. Yep. How was it? It was fine. The worst part of it was definitely just the injection of the local anaesthetic, but after that I couldn't feel anything. Um, the side effects of the dye is always really, really strange. So. Sometimes you get fireworks or lightning shows. Sometimes you get the feeling that half your face is burning. Sometimes you get a metal taste at the bottom of your mouth. But it's all, you know, it's all tolerable. It's over within a couple of seconds. It's fine. What's happening now? Um, so right now, um, Dr. Rennie is pressing on my groin. And that's to make sure that there is no um, hematoma, which is a blood clot forming around my uh, femoral artery. And that's just to make sure that it all seals up properly and I don't um, have any complications like bleeding. Great. Dr. Renning, how do you think it went? Yeah, it went perfectly. So I'll be pressing here for about 10 minutes to ensure, just as Brendan was saying, that it will all heal up and there won't be any uh, uh, bleeding from around the artery or blood clots that might form around the artery. But yeah, it all went well. She's a model patient <laughs> for doing an angiogram on. She kept beautifully still when we took the pictures and tolerated the more uncomfortable of the procedures very quickly and very, very well indeed. It's because I'm a veteran. <laughs> Usually patients will have to lie flat afterwards for about four hours and that's just to make sure that the healing of the artery that the catheter was inserted into isn't disrupted and then after that as long as everything went well and there are no complications patients can usually go home a few hours after that. Cerebral angiograms are generally safe and painless procedures but for a few days or weeks afterwards it's quite common to have some bruising, soreness or a very little lump or collection of blood near where the cut was made. There is of course a very small risk of more serious complications such as an allergic reaction to the dye or a stroke as a result. 
but that's really uncommon. And your radiologist will talk through these risks and complications with you before you undertake the angiography.